Center. Giovanni Ferrosi with Ben Riss. Hello. I appreciate your being in again. You've been here before. Thanks for having me. You've done this, but you had a big week this week. It was. It was a big week. <laughs> a long time coming. Big week this week. You were trying to, again, uh, put to rest this legal matter about a number of issues pertaining to Ben Riss, uh, not the least of which was the trademark. And you settled. And you, and you, uh, how, how, how big of an issue was this looming over Ben Riss? Did this need to be settled and decided to move forward? Sure, absolutely. So the number one issue is always, you know, what is the stability of an organization when you invest in it and um, when you grow? And so for the last few years, it was kind of a moving target. And um, I didn't want to kind of compete against myself. And, um, you know, because that's really what it would have been. Um, you know, there are a lot of issues that were open and discussed and the impact on, you know, how much things are, et cetera. And so I'm just happy that it was amicably uh, settled and uh, we're able to move on. And um, we know now that I can, you know, go out there and tell you how great Benris is and make sure, uh, you know, you not only purchase our products, but you watch the growth of the company. You watch uh, its impact on branding, its impact on um, the national scene, and more importantly, as an American company, as we go around the world, you know, how agile we are, how we're able to, you know, make a difference. And, uh, and that is exciting. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's always a little odd to talk about yourself, as I, as I always say, but I have to, right? So I have to tell you you know, the confidence I have, why we do the things we do. And remember, I have a certain unique skill set that, you know, just comes with having been, you know, a combat veteran and uh, native Rhode Islander and an immigrant and everything else in between uh, that I've uh, kind of compiled over the years and am able to apply and navigate a uh, crisis when you're uh, confronted with it. So you had sort of this a crisis that had been a protracted crisis, if you will. You were dealing with the legal matters at hand. If I were to ask you today, what are the three things that Benris needs to do now to position itself to achieve a greater level of success? Well, the first one we've done. So we're focused on uh, moving the center of gravity uh, to a sales-focused effort, and uh, therefore we'll, uh, you know, be engaged in uh, Manhattan and New York City. Um, and you know, market week, all of the, the various things we need to do, uh, editorials, things that uh, really um, engage the public to the product. You so know, you got, this, this, you got the sales focus. Yeah, the sales focus has to be there. Uh, the second one is uh, you know the financial effort now again is shifted toward uh, actually getting product. Mm -hmm. So you know having the right financial instruments in place. Uh, that uh, coincide with the growth of the organization. Uh, so that needs to happen. And then the third one is uh, one that, you know, over the years, I know myself and, and, and others, we, we kind of talk about it, but you're really seeing it. And that is, you know, this is the, the Amazon world. And if you don't think that you have to be e-commerce focused and get product out to people in a non-brick-and-mortar um, uh, facility, mm. then you're not paying attention. You really need to do that. And, you know, I spent the last uh, week uh, with um, the Wharton School of Business. As, I'm a Wharton fellow, and, and we were in uh, L.A., and we got the behind-the-scenes look at about 20 companies and the, the things they're doing. And, you, you know, it's amazing to me how, you know, delayed a lot of the activity is that I see um, when it comes to local businesses, local companies, or even even those in New York, the old bureaucracies. And uh, I have something to share with you in a minute or so about you know how to really combat that. But I even offered uh, to, to the Professor Jerry Wind and, and others. I said, hey, you know, I don't even understand why Amazon makes it. You know, why doesn't FedEx and UPS just get in the game? Why? Do we need Amazon? And sure enough, uh, one of my uh, fellow program uh, attendees, she was telling me how she ordered, you know, dog food, um, some hot sauce, <laughs> and some shoes, all from Amazon. And she had, you know, literally three packages. Okay. She's like, now what do I do with all these packages, right? Because now I have three boxes I have to dispose of. Yep. And that's what I mean is, if in fact someone's paying attention you'd realize, wait a minute, if I'm UPS, 
I'll sell you the stuff and I'll be able to get all three of those products and put it in one box and you get one box. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are the kinds of disruption and change that needs to happen. The key word is always disruption. But um, if I could, I'll share with you the two kind of key points I got out of it. But uh, whatever you're no, ready. No, please tell. Yeah, so um, I thought this was uh, apropos, so to speak, both for business and for politics, as we know. I, I certainly monitor that as well. And what we did on Sunday evening is we went to the Magic Castle in L.A. It's really the history of, of magicians and magic and everything else. And the CEO, um, he, he went through kind of the business lessons of it. And you would think like, okay, wait a minute, why are we you know, here? Mm. But it was amazing to really hear it. And some of the things he went through, he said, listen, there's two types of companies. There's two types of leaders. There's two types of magicians. He said the first one is the incumbents. Mm. And incumbents are losing everywhere. Uh, by default, they play defense. Mm -hmm. They're huge bureauc bureaucracies. They're overconfident. They're cocky. And their way of thinking is, you know, that's not the way we do it here. That's, mm -hmm. that's their response, mm -hmm. right? And then, then there are insurgents. And uh, insurgents are mobile and they're agile. They love change. And a matter of fact, he went through and he's accurate. Any general who is an insurgent has won. So even in the military focused areas that I like to, to look at, insurgents always win. Um, so and right now, 70% of Americans want change. Mm -hmm. That's a huge number. But you know what they want is they want to disrupt the dialogue. They're against pain in the marketplace. They want to you know, fix it yeah. somehow. Uh, make they want to make their difference make a difference and that's important and uh, then he went on to give the example of the magician he said the great magicians are great insurgents Houdini right obviously uh, it was all about escape get out of the chains of oppression right so invert against incumbents and so I just thought that was so again appropriate for what we're dealing with both in the marketplace you know I look at you know some of the the way certain others view my activity and they think that you know I would be embarrassed about it when in fact you know I'm proud of it I'm proud of change I'm proud of being agile I'm proud of not being restrained in an environment that's going backwards is only going to collapse you know we have all of these old industrial cities dealing with the issues we have because people just sat and wait and just let everything collapse instead of making the change and so that's what I'm focused on. That's what Banners is focused on. Um, you know, so I think we'll be in a real good position. And, uh, you know, and then again, when it comes to brands and incumbents, listen, I want success for everyone. But there's no denying, you know, if you're the Ralph Lauren's of the world, you're Michael Kors now, all these others, their five-year runs over again, you mm -hmm. know, and it's time for the new brands to come and emerge. And uh, I'm just so happy that I was disciplined enough following my own advice of the four phases of war, phase one is you prepare the battlefield, phase two is you cross the line of departure, that I was able to just take an operational pause and not cross that line of departure yet. Mm. You know, I had to stop for a second, make sure we have everything in order, and now you will hear a lot about Benris, you know, come the summer and going forward, and that's the way it should be. Okay. Um, so. Um, so, you know, you just came back from LA, Yeah. back here in Rhode Island right now, what do you got in the immediate future? Any weekend plans? You got things going on? Well, I am actually uh, heading to Miami uh, early in the morning. Um, I will be down there for the next uh, few days. Next few days? Down in Miami? <laughs> uh, is, uh, does this coincide with the Republican Governors Association? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there's, uh, well, you know, there's, uh, you have to attend things. You have to be uh, educated and aware of what's going on. And uh, yes, there's an event. Um, that's taking place there and you know there's always a, a great dialogue but you know one of the things I truly believe and this goes for anyone who's interested in running both uh, on the Republican side potential Democrat uh, primary types independents moderate party etc do it but let's all everyone focus on making the change use all your dollars use your message on just making the change Whoever emerges, emerges. 
don't knock people, don't go after each other, just, just run, <laughs> just run. <laughs> Imagine if every dollar, every dollar, every moment, every conversation was focused on pointing out what is wrong with the current administration, which there's a lot wrong, but the two critical things that are wrong is the focus on changing our culture. So tying it back to business, the most important thing in business is your corporate culture. And so when I look at Rhode Island... You talk about this administration, you're talking about here in Rhode Island. I am. Okay. I am, and obviously there's other states in our boat, but you know, speaking about Rhode Island, it's changing the culture. And our culture was always one of hard work. It was one of you know, exchanging uh, our, our backgrounds. It was exchanging uh, you know, our ideas. It was following leadership. All of the things that made us great and instead, you know, they're trying to lower the standards, trying to make everybody equal. And I don't know how many times I can say this. We are not equal. Do you understand that? We're not even close. So everybody is doing what they're doing. And so if you have a particular business focus or you're a laborer somewhere, your efforts are going to outpace somebody else's. You're either the best of your bunch, or you're the worst of your bunch, or you're somewhere in between. But there's no way everybody's equal all the time. So all these efforts, you know, be it the free tuition, all this other craziness that people talk about, it's just, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, thank God the mechanisms are there to catch it. So, you know, unfortunately we have this, this huge shortfall in, um, in Rhode Island, so they're, you know, they caught it, so to speak. Mm. But, you know, even that, there's ways to fix that. And I've always said, you know, it doesn't take me specifically to want to see the change um, get done earlier. In other words, if I need to potentially run, I run, you know, and we, I believe I'd be the best at it because I can, you know, uh, put in place change and affect change. But even beforehand, I'm going to give you my ideas. Right now, you should be tagging everything in the state, every asset, every person, one through ten. Okay? And obviously we use terms like essential employees, non-essential, things like that. No, go further. Everything. Put a 1 through 10 on it. You take your budget, 1 through 5 gets covered, no matter what. How much is left over? Okay, all the 6s are in. Okay, do we have any more for 7s? Yes, we can get every 7 in. We have a couple, a little bit more money left, and what's that? All right, we can get some 8s in. Keep that building, keep these people. Okay? The rest? See you later, okay? That's how you do it. It's, it's not hard. It takes leadership. It takes people making decisions. And, but it takes honesty. And more importantly, it takes a conversation with the people that are affected. So if I'm someone who wants to take a state job or some sort of public sector employee job, I can look at it and say, wait a minute, this is a nine. Yeah. You know, do I want to leave where I'm at, or am I going to go buy a new house by taking a 9 position or a 10? So it's no surprise if I come up to you and say, hey, guess what, you know, this year things didn't go the way we expected them to go, you got to go. But you don't tell the people who are 5s and 4s and 3s, I'm going to mess with your pension, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Like, that's, that's what's wrong, is there's no real management. And people think you can just, you know, go to some class and get management. Management is built on life experiences. You know, if you don't think that I know how to navigate crisis after what I've been through right now. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> speaking of life experience, I mean, what do you have to say? You've been through it, especially a very tumultuous several months even. Mm -hmm. And again, having announced this week again that next step in Ben Rice, sure. what do you have to say to folks who might have looked at you and thought, oh, what's he doing? What's the direction of Ben Rice? He's got so many legal issues. Mm -hmm. How would you address those folks? Well, again, it's, it's part of understanding you're, you're engaged. You know, one of the takeaways I gave to the rest of the group prior to deporting Los Angeles was, listen, you know, we are still in Afghanistan because people are behind the perimeter. <laughs> They're just hanging around, you know? <laughs> Engage. The minute you leave the perimeter, what happens? Well, you have combat deaths, injury, wounds, et cetera, wounded. That's the issue is people don't want to see that because it's ugly. Mm. They don't want that. Yep. They don't want body bags. They don't want things coming in that are, you know, what's, what's that? What is that? But to be victorious, you have to go through it. And it's just a really, really, really sad, the level of inexperience 
that is relaying information sometimes. You know, I look at, you know, uh, you know, different organizations that, that just, you know, they can write all, anything they can find, anything bad with me, they'll write it and they'll write it on the front page. Anything good, you haven't seen a story. I don't know, it's five days ago. I haven't seen a, a paragraph. Okay, so it's just, it's amazing the way um, people apply their own, you know, objectives. And in this case, I will tell you that nothing's going to discourage me. It's, uh, you know, obviously not always a great ride. Sometimes it's bumpy, uh, as was said in uh, the article you all wrote. But it's okay. Life is bumpy. You know, I cannot tell you how many people reach out to me on Facebook Messenger, or emails, or other things, and tell me how much I impact their lives because they have a similar situation going on. They want the advice. And you can't give advice if you don't have the experience. So I always say, I, don't, I didn't ask for all my experience. <laughs> uh, God knows that. But I have it. And uh, I really feel that there's, um, just, there's very few people that have that kind of experience. Well, we'll be continuing to watch what's happening with Ben Riss again after this week. As you said, looking at the sales focus, looking at a New yeah. York focus, looking at an online focus. So we'll continue to be covering, again, Ben Merson business here in the state. So I appreciate your coming in today, Gio. Well, thank you for having me, as always. And I, I want to report it. back from thank the Republican you. Governors Association. Uh, so. Well, I, I'm not sure uh, how much of a public meeting it is, but we'll, uh, we'll uh, I'm sure you, have let some takeaways. You know, yeah, there's always some good recon. ideas, good people. And um, you know, people who want to make change will, will do it. Those who want status quo, they'll keep it the same. I'm telling you right now, if you don't make a change, you're not on the right team. So it doesn't matter if you're a political party, just make change. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. Take care. Gio Ferrosi. Bye now. CEO of Benris here in studio. Again, earlier this week announced on Go Local, um, had settled some major issues for the company. Uh, one of which was a trademark issue, some things that have been holding up the company from moving forward. So wanted to get an update from Gio as to where things are. Told us, as he said, three big issues to move the company forward. Talked a little bit, again, going down to Florida, Republican Governors Association meeting down there taking place next week, and talking about incumbents versus insurgents, uh, something that he had discussed with some Wharton fellows out in L.A. this past week. Uh, always an interesting discussion when Gio Ferrosi is